question from Jim is up next for you. He says, Jim or Jim? Jim. Jim. J I M. Slim Jim. Slim Jim. He says, Can you please talk about long term disability insurance? Do I really need this? And how much of my current income should it aim to replace? 100%? 60%? He's not sure. And he, he says, thanks for answering his question. So the question is, what is long-term mm-hmm. disability insurance? Well, it is an insurance policy that pays you money if you are disabled for a long period of time. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. And so the question is, well, do I need it? Well, you have to answer the question, if I were to become disabled and I no longer had income coming in, I could not show up to my job to do the thing that I do to have money coming in, how bad of a situation would that be? Uh, would my mortgage company still want their mortgage? Would the grocery store still want money for groceries? Would my kids and my family and the people that depend on me still need that income coming in for their well-being? If the answer to all those questions is yes, then I would argue you have an insurable need for disability insurance. As professional financial advisors, I would argue that disability insurance is probably one of the most commonly underinsured things that we see because no one ever thinks, oh, I'm going to I'm going to be disabled. But statistically, it appears that you are more likely to become disabled at some point in your working career than you are to have premature death. And yet most people have no problem buying life insurance, but they don't think about disability insurance. And so I think that someone needs it if the event of you becoming disabled would cause a strain either on your financial situation or others financial situation. So the question is, well, how much do I need? And are there different types? And do I buy it through my employer or do I get it on my own? And how do I navigate those sort of things? Yeah, I mean, the, these are great questions. And I, th- I'm, I love the fact because I, I, I have disability insurance mm-hmm. on myself, Same. Um, you know, because it's one of those things I, I do think about. I bought it through mine was bought through a trade organization. Same. I mean, so I actually have one through the AICPA and I think I have another one through NAPFA. Mm-hmm. So it's, um, it, it's a very interesting thing. Now, the question is, how much? 100%? 60%? Well, there's some some technical stuff you need to know behind the scenes of why 60% might go further than you realize. The reason I say that is, is because we, we know with a lot of things, you always have to worry about what are the tax impacts of it. You know, when you're trying to figure out if I buy this, I always have to take into account that I'm probably going to pay 25, 30% on taxes on whatever I receive. If you structure your, your disability policy to where it's pay, the premiums are paid with after tax, not pre-tax, meaning you didn't take the deduction when you made the premium payment, then if you ever actually have, a, 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 you need to actually turn a policy and take the benefit off of it, it's actually tax-free. Um, that's why it's so important, if you, especially if you do an employer-provided plan, just make sure that the premiums are paid post-tax or after tax. You didn't take a tax deduction because that tax-free benefit is huge. That's why 60% will go a long way. Now, I do want to remind everyone that this is long-term disability. So there will be several months Mm -hmm. before these policies can even go into effect because this is for a prolonged illness, disability, you know, just an injury of some sort. So you're still going to need to make sure you have, you know, emergency reserves Mm -hmm. or anything else to provide income or cover expenses while you're waiting for that, 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 that period of time before the policy actually goes into effect. So, but um, those things matter. And then also pay attention to, and I'll leave a little bit on there for you to talk about the occupational side Mm -hmm. of it, but know how long you'll get the benefit. Um, I mean, Years ago, you used to see lifetime benefits. Now you see period, you know, th- disability policies, period three years, certain, five yeah. years that are period certain. So just pay attention to those things. They impact how much the premiums will be. And then, Bo, the most important or last thing, I guess, to, to make sure everybody has their vocabulary and, and all the components that go into this, is how your own occupation goes into play with, with disability yeah, policies. Yeah, there are two, two different definitions that they use for disability insurance. One is your own occupation definition, and one is any occupation. And any occupation sounds exactly like what it says. If you were to become disabled and there was no job that you could perform, those policies would pay out. Well, as you can imagine, if you're someone who's highly specialized, I'll use a surgeon as an example, and you need to be able to use your hands very specifically to do very specific things, but you became disabled and you couldn't use your hands, but you could still serve some other purpose. You could teach, you could be a professor, you could do something like that. 
And any occupation disability policy might not pay because you could still go out and get another job and earn a wage and make a living. And own OCK, uh, own OCK disability definition says that you cannot perform your actual occupation. So if you are a surgeon, the disability policy says you get disabled and you cannot do the surgery that you do, then it will pay out. Now, it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive, but I would argue for higher income earners or more specialized vocations, you want to make sure that some portion of your disability coverage is covered by own occupation so that you can make sure in the event something took place, you're actually getting those policy benefits paid out. You don't want to be that person that went with the cheap route and at the time when you need the policy the most, it's not there, not willing to pay out benefits. Yeah.